Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. We're on the free to play young CGB as I call it account. And here's what we're looking at today. We've still got a constructed event we're working on. Here's some packs that we're going to open on Friday. And here's our quest, 20 black or green spells. I'm going to re-roll it. You always want to try to hit that 750, a little extra gold and it's for green and white spells. Looks like today is going to be building a Selesnya deck. Now, I liked the Selesnya tokens deck from last time. You might ask, why did I delete it if I liked it so much? Well, honestly, it's because I really like building these types of decks. Um, I just like building from scratch, but I might try something a little different this time. I'm sort of tokens plus a Johnny's Pride mate can make for very big shenanigans. So I might try a little bit of that out. And then the rest of the time, we'll pick out things that basically fit the token synergy so that if we have those things, we're going off. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I want a Johnny in this one. I think a Johnny tried to make the final cut last time and failed, but now we have Pride Mate, so it's kind of a flavor fail if I don't, as well as the War Leaders. Even though they rarely do anything, it feels. On Sarah's Wings could be an exciting card to slide into the deck somewhere. So this will be less tokeny and more um, aggro, I suspect. And if we're leaning harder into white and we want to have a white man on turn one, we don't need Llanowar Elves. So now we'll go over to the branches to help make that draw great. The Wild Growth Walkers for a little bit more explore action. I don't know if these will make the final cut. Like I said, we're probably not as much on tokens as we are on a sort of twisted aggro, I guess you could say, an exploring aggro. Yeah, I did craft those other explorer creatures at common, so this might be their time to do their Jade Light Ranger impersonation. Of course, how could I proceed without my Tender Shoot Dryad? We've been through so much together. And some people would say Carnage Tyrant because of control. We'll throw it in for a minute, but I don't know if it will stay. I don't know if we will keep it. Amara can definitely make it. And the Cavalier seems good. Camaraderie is a card I just don't usually get enough of, and March of the Multitudes is great. And then down here in the mana spot, we have some temple gardens and sun petal groves, hallelujah. And a few guild gates to round it out because free to play means you live by the guild gates. We can also try some memorial to follies. So how are we doing? We have five cards too many. I'm getting pretty good at this. Let's just crank out these decks. Well, what's our creature count like? 26, pretty high. Plus we've got cards that make creatures. I think the migrations, maybe we can just tr trim the migrations a little bit. I don't know if we even really have enough life gain for this pride mate, so we're leaning on drawing welcome and pride mate, but I think that's okay. Mentor or the meek, I don't know if that will actually pass the test this time, but I do have a lot of things that would trigger it. We have War Leader and Conclave Cavalier. I think I'll pull out the Sarah's Wings. And the Carnage Tyrant. Sorry, big guy. There's a ramp deck for you. I like camaraderie for this style. A lot. Probably too much, some might say. All right, 62 cards. I think we'll, we have so many two drops, we'll rock and roll without migration this time out. So, green, white, life, aggro. So many ways that you can go in the green, white pile. Interested in trying out this one. Let's check mana really quick. Make sure they didn't lopside our mana. Sometimes they do that when we have Memorial to Glory in our deck. So, green and white, pretty much even. 15 and 16, along with five gold. So we want even splits of mana. So we should raise our forest by one and trim our planes by one because otherwise it's a little lopsided. Also trying to decide if I need 
to trim some guild gates so I have more untapped sources, especially with Memorial to Glory. And I think that is, I think that's a good move. Go to something like three guild gates. All right, ready for some questing? Let's do it. Oh no, we fell out of silver. It was all those tier one beatings that Boros took. Hashtag blame Boros. Did I just hashtag? Gross. But this hand is pretty nice. We have a two drop. We don't have a good three drop, but I'm putting my faith in the deck to deliver one. Our opponent opening, their name is Perfection Blue. Their first play is a Herald into Curious Obsession. This game is over. I'm not playing anymore. I'm not playing anymore. Yeah, not gonna play that. That's, I've never even done that with the mono blue deck, but good on that player. <laughs> Snap concession. I've never met for first turn Herald uh, into Curious Obsession, Cur Curious Obsession before. All right, let's keep that. Watery Grave. Here's a Memorial to Glory. Okay, two mana. We didn't get thought erased. That's something. And here is my pride mate. How you doing? Man, it's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> I can tell you right now, everybody. This is not the way it's supposed to go. Um. Hmm. Try and decide whether or not to history or to district guide, and I think the history is fine. But let's start with an attack. The opponent will not block, guaranteed. But. Ouch. Well, I'm wishing I played the district guide now, every now and then, but I guess I have to get the quasi duplicate with the third Thief of Sanity, too. How to win this? How to win this? Oh, God. Don't like my chances. They did not take Mentor of the Meek or Path of Discovery. They found something they like even more than that. That's scary. Well, I'm confident they'll quasi-duplicate again. Let's launch the threats. So I think I have to let the thieves hit me two more times, which is disgusting. But we'll also make the opponent figure out how to kill the war leader. And if they don't, that will go off. It's not like we give them a bunch of removal spells. We might give them a lot of ways to gum up the board and block, but probably not a lot of removal spells. Okay, they picked out a creature and they didn't bring back quasi-duplicate. Interesting. There's camaraderie to go over the top. Let's try to move to combat. Okay. 
So I could not attack with the pride mate and then the lifelink things will make it big enough to go over the wayfinder. I think that's wise. And then I, okay, a seal away. Well, they got our one of seal away out of the deck. Alright, they're at five. We'll leave up Settle the Wreckage. In case the thieves do come back at us. But if they don't, we can march with the multitudes. Can we kill our opponent? If we make four creatures with march, then we have five, six, seven. Then they can't attack with the thieves anyway. So let's pay that. If we draw camaraderie, we win. Okay, they took an Amara. But you can't keep attacking, can you? Can you really? There's one more exiled card. Oh, it's the um, the war leader. Okay, we did not draw the land. Um, God, that's a tilt. But we'll hang in there. Our opponent can't really attack us. But we, unfortunately, aren't in a position to attack the opponent. Let's go for the district guide so that we have camaraderie available next turn. We'll go ahead and get a tapped land out of the deck so we don't draw it later. And no attacks. I could have got a forest and played the Wild Growth Walker. That would have been wiser, I bet. But if everything gets blown up here, I'll look like a genius. I can't believe they didn't even take the Ajani. Okay, well, now I look like a genius because I have something to discard that isn't very important. All right, my opponent with a really loopy deck. Thief of Sandy, Thoughtbound Phantasm, now we have Disinformation Campaign, now we're using Surveil Mechanics, so and Quasi-Duplicate. So it's a Thief of Sanity plus Surveil. I guess it's not that loopy. They, these are things that blue-black mages like. That's what we could call the deck. Things blue-black mages like. Unfortunately, they're not going to like what happens next turn. Oh yes, please remember to attack me. Start feeling safe. Ah, just one? I'm disappointed. Well, um, did they find the other camaraderie is the question. Oh no, the other camaraderie is down here. All right then. Ha ha! Let's go. They can survive at one life and they have to block with everything. I mean, you're dead to that. Still dead. And death is accepted. All right, eight spells cast. Is that all we cast in that game? Wow. I should get credit when my opponent plays them off the Thief. Of course, you know, I have Thief of Sanity. I could just play my blue-black deck and achieve all the quests by casting my opponent's spells. I don't have to be building these decks anyway. Maybe that's uh, something I should try. 
It's kind of a a funny joke. We won't build a like Boros deck in the future. We'll just cast uh, Boros. We'll just cast Boros spells using Thief of Sanity, and play blue black. Yes, I like this idea. A lot of four drops in the hand. Happy to have a pride mate, but all the four drops are showing up right this minute. And the very, very expensive, of course, March of the Multitudes. Death Gorge Scavenger. Interesting card. Whenever it attacks, you may exile target card from a graveyard. If a creature card is exiled this way, you gain two life. If a non-creature card is exiled this way, plus one, plus one. So let's keep that in mind as we use our branch walker. We may still need to put something in our graveyard anyway. Oh, that land is very, very welcome here. No attacks. But if we keep the graveyard empty, Death Gorge doesn't have anything to feast on. Gross. Your demise won't be quick or quiet. Hmm, but you don't attack. No, you do not. Hmm. Best play might be a Johnny getting back the pride mate. If I attack this Vraska, I'm sure my opponent will block, but I think I like that. Let's at least find out. Yeah, I think the Death Gorge is expendable. Well, the Branch Walker is expendable. I think the Death Gorge is medium. So I don't have a way to gain life just yet for the Pride Mate. So perhaps we do get back the Branch Walker. I understand you are in need of support. There's more work to do. And there's a Jade Light Ranger on top of the deck. Do I need you? I don't think so. I have all these four drops. I'm not going to be casting this anytime soon. I'll graveyard it. This is where I don't know how good the Vraska really is. You don't want to sacrifice your lands and fall behind. You don't want to play a creature and sacrifice that and fall behind because then it may still be attacked. So this is where Vraska for the most part, is a set piece. Well, there's a Knight of Autumn. What are you going to do with her? Make it a 4-3. I suppose that would then block the Branch Walker, and are we sacrificing something? You really don't... I don't like sacrificing lands here unless your whole hand is land, so perhaps that is the situation. And an Assassin's Trophy for a Johnny. I'll take the ramp. Ramp is nice. Wayfinder off the top. The Knight of Autumn will block again, I'm confident. So let's try to attack. I'm happy to make the trade again. We're definitely pulling way ahead of our opponent on cards because we're getting two for ones off of our spells while they're giving us extra lands and things like that. Now I'll play... It's really tough because if I play the War Leader, it's very possible the War Leader just dies to a Chupacabra, but our opponent only has one black. All right, we'll give it a shot. If it lives, we can certainly pressure a Planeswalker very well. And I'd rather have the Shalai. The flying could be crucial. Pain is weakness, leaving the 
If you are going to sacrifice your land in your main phase with Frasca, you should tap it first just to have mana available in case you draw something that can use that mana. Here comes Death Gorge Scavenger. Number two, and our opponent's going to eat one of our graveyard creatures to gain two life. It's probably Shalai and Merfolk Branchwalker for this turn. I'm going to start by attacking Vraska and seeing what happens. I don't think playing the Shalai first makes any difference. I can't imagine what the card they could have for this mana that would affect that combat somehow is, but let's go forth and find out. Our opponent continues to jump block to defend Vraska, but you've got to ask yourself at some point, I don't die that easily. is Vraska worth defending this much? Some people may defend her to the death. Let's see what happens when we play a Merfolk Branchwalker. Okay, another land. Now, I'm nervous about a sweeper, but I'm not quite sure what it could be from this mana position. And I don't think it will be something. Finality just isn't going to happen from this spot. So I'll play the Shalai as well to defend my other cards. It also has this plus one plus one sweet ability if we get to use it with our war leader. And that is the concession. Fourteen, about halfway home. Forgive me there, trying to clear my throat. Don't know if I've got some of that November crud going on in my throat. I can keep this hand for sure. We have a Merfolk Branch Walker to hopefully find another land, and if it's a green land, the Jade Light Ranger. Against red, often the best thing to play here is the Thorn Lieutenant. However, if they want to shock the Merfolk Branch Walker, I'm not too upset about that. And it gets me closer to drawing the lands I need if it's not a land on top of the deck. And possibly it gets me closer to drawing the right land if it's a forest, but yeah, perfect. There you go. Two mountains, goblin instigation. Okay, plenty of forests off the top now. Let's work on finding a plains. That is also interesting, but I've already played two Explore creatures with no more in my hand. It's weird against Mono Red to even consider getting rid of a Wild Growth Walker, but I'm going to do it. And I'll keep you because you can get the other white mana and make sure that my hand works out. That I can cast my spells, that's the most important thing. This March of the Multitudes, of course, is something we very much want to work our way up to, and having set all the wreckage available might be a big deal. Oh boy. It's a bossy creature you got there. It may as well attack with all of them, to be honest, because I will eat one with the Jade Light anyway, but the Branch Walker would simply trade for another. All right. Here's my district guide. Take the action. I don't have anything to do with the mana, so I may as well get a tap land out of my deck. And say go. A gutter snipe. So the goblins are out in force today. 
Anybody else coming along? No, nope. just brick walling the Legion war boss. We could be setting up Tender Shoot Dryad. We could do March of the Multitudes. I don't know if my opponent has their shock and such. I usually like to save the Tender Shoot Dryad till I don't think they do, but I just don't know what's going on over there. Perhaps my play is like Branch Walker and Thorn Lieutenant getting onto the battlefield. But if the opponent doesn't have a way to kill this, Well, they could kill it right now without me gaining any tokens if they do have that. I'm also debating just March of the Multitudes. But I don't have a way to pump everything just yet. Let's see if we can work our way to something to take advantage of all the creatures. Another land. And we'll play our Thorn Lieutenant as well. No attacks. Sitting back doesn't seem terrible, but it does feel like maybe if I pressured this opponent, we could get them to make some poor plays. I, I feel like I should be trying to trade the Branch Walker as soon as possible because of Goblin Chain Whirler specifically. So I'm going to try to trade off my Branch Walkers quickly. I don't want them to just I don't want them to die to a Goblin Chain Whirler. And then I gain nothing from them. That's a big boy. Okay. So at this phase, we eat this. And I think I take the five. There's also the option of this, which our opponent can only kill one. Oh, I like that. Then we're only trading one creature for the charging monstrosaur. I like that a lot. Because five power total versus six toughness means they can only kill one of the threats. All right, we've drawn plenty of land now. Stop that, stop that. Now we can play a tender shoot dryad though. I believe I still wanna continue my mission to trade away my branchy. And here comes Tender. And here comes City's Blessing. And we'll see if the opponent has been saving up some removal for the Dryad. Okay. I'll block this and I'll block this. And we'll see what happens. I don't want to block with the Sapperling on the war boss, even though it's a 3-3 and the war boss is a 2-2, because if my opponent uses a removal spell to kill the Tender Shoot Dryad, I lose the Sapperling for nothing. Our opponent may have, I don't know, a Trumpet Blast, something to pump up these creatures. A Sure Strike. All right, first strike. Yeah, we'll take two damage from the Gutter Snipe. The Legion war boss will live. The token will die. The Tender Shoot will remain. And the Johnny's Welcome will be an absolute life gain machine here. But I'm not going to attack. I'm going to do a massive March of the Multitudes instead. Actually, I will attack with the Jade Light Ranger. Because four damage versus one token and one life, I'd rather take the four damage. Gain a life, make a creature. I didn't attack with the 3-3 here again, in case the opponent was slow rolling a removal for Tender Shoot Dryad, which is very unlikely, but why take the risk? And our opponent won't get to see March of the Multitudes. 
Not going to happen. Nine more spells. I don't think I can keep it, even with a branch walker. If even one of these produced white mana, this hand could be a keep, but I don't think I can from this spot. It's asking too much to find two white sources. Oops. I meant to hit Mulligan. I think because I talked about keep too much, the misclick was real. Sound off in chat if you ever made that mistake. Now we'll see what happens. <laughs> Never punished? Let's find out. I'll keep it because it might help me work on finding the second white mana even more. Wily Goblin. Okay. The Goblin party continues. I'll go ahead and attack. I don't fear the 1-1. One, one. And I'll play the... Hmm. I guess I should play you if I find a tapped white land. I want to get it out this turn. Never punished. <laughs> uh oh. Well, that's a real threat. We have the settle, but I don't need to play it right away. I can focus on my board development a little while longer. I think the Mentor of the Meek is an interesting move here. It does create a world where I can get History and Amara to draw extra cards if the opponent doesn't have removal for it. So far they've played Goblin and Rekindling Phoenix. Let's give it a try. Probably a bad bet to think my creatures can live against red. Probably a very bad bet. I should have tried to set up something like where Amara could attack, make a token, and I draw a card with Mentor the same turn. I think that would have been a better line. At least against typical red decks, but this goblin deck doesn't seem to kill things at all. And I'm perfectly fine with taking a little bit of damage to get my opponent in the spirit of attacking so that I can catch him with a settle later. Okay. Let's teach the history of Benalia. I will pay the one and draw the card. But no attacks. This first striking rigging runner is a bit of a buzzkill. There's Chain Whirler. How do we know that that card was in that deck? Chain Whirler coming in. I think I'll preserve some life total with a chump block, but I'm happy to get that Chain Whirler attacking. Maybe we can get an even bigger attack next turn. So this will go off. We'll draw the card because I plan to hold up Settle. And this has first strike, so no attacks. So we'll play the Memorial to Glory and we'll look very weak. We'll sit here looking sad. Well, goblins. Oh my, even the Banneret's going to come in. I don't think they're thinking about a settle. I don't think they're thinking about a settle. Uh-huh. So I'll also try to get my opponent. This is something you can also do. I'll try to get my opponent to make some plays to remove one of these creatures. 
So if they have like a shock, they might use one here or, so, or a, if a sure strike, I think we saw out of this deck last time, they might try to play that kind of card right now. Or they might also try to pump their banneret. But as long as we don't hit the damage button, we can still respond with this Settle the Wreckage. Oh, ho, ho, ho. mercy. All right, we're definitely attacking with the four threes. We can play the Amara draw card and play the War Leader. I'm going to do this before combat, just in case there's some... We draw something off the top that influences something. But it looks like War Leader can... The Pride Mate can wait for the War Leader pumps for next turn. But the opponent's had enough. They, they see that their army got settled. It was sad. It has happened. And we still have two spells to go. Mana, let's make sure we mulligan this time. We got pretty lucky last time. Painful lands. But they do what we need. But I don't need another 4-drop. I'd rather have my land be painful than one-sided. Let's see what we find with our branchy. Again, I don't have any more Explorer in my hand, so I will Graveyard you. Plus, it makes it more likely I'll find my fourth land on time to play this Cavalier. Daybreak Chaplain. 1-3 Lifelink. Send in the Branchy. I think I'd, I'll take the curve out with History of Benalia and Cavalier over the Mentor of the Meek card advantage. I think that taking an aggressive role in this game can bring us victory. Our Branch Walker has been sealed away. Chaplain wants to attack. I'll take it. I'm not... If our opponent has a moment of triumph or something absurd of that nature, I would rather just make sure I have my knight when it is a 4-3. Their attack is pretty free, and the block is reasonably low risk, but not completely low risk. Now remember, Conclave Cavalier is a knight. That means History of Benalia will pump it up. Um, Dawn of Hope is here. Whenever our opponent gains life, they may draw a card for two mana. And for four mana, they can create a 1-1 white soldier token with lifelink. And they have a lifelink creature here in the Daybreak Chaplain. So this Pride Mate is potentially a decent threat. However, nothing right now stacks up to this attack. Our opponent can't kill the Cavalier. They could double block here, but that would be welcome. So let's send in the creatures. Yep, Pride Mate's going to start becoming very large. I'm going to play a Johnny's Welcome, so we have our own life gain engine. And I'm going to play Mentor of the Meek to take the most advantage of our mana. Amara can come down next turn and draw a card. If Conclave Cavalier dies while Mentor has mana available, we can draw cards off the tokens that are made. A very fun engine if you enjoy healing or life gain is a Johnny's Welcome, Dawn of Hope, a Johnny's Pride Mate, and any kind of creatures. You can gain so much life and draw so many cards. It's an interesting combo. It can be very fun to play. All right, I believe the first play I want to make is attacking with a Cavalier. 
If the opponent trades, we can draw two cards from the Mentor. I don't believe attacking with the other knights is beneficial at this point. One will die, and it will be sad. I don't actually expect my opponent to block with the Pride Mate since they have Dawn of Hope. They can find ways to continually make it bigger, and when it's bigger than the Cavalier, it doesn't have to trade with the Cavalier. Instead, Inspiring Cleric is going to take one for the team. Bring out Imara. I'm holding the land in case I draw a tap land, which I would rather play, like a guild gate. Did I decline? I thought I was... I need to read my stuff. I'm having a day. Did I actually just decline to draw a card? First the wrong mulligan, now I'm declining to draw a card? What was in my breakfast? Hmm. Well, for this attack, I can send in a lot of creatures, make a token, draw a card. If this dies, draw two cards, etc. We might lose two creatures, but we get our opponent to seven and we at least draw one card from it. It's not great. I'm not saying it's great, but I think it helps move the game forward. Let's give it a try. Pay one. There. Oof. Rough. Rough. I also hope my opponent blocks the knights, not the Amara, for some reason. But it doesn't look like they're willing to make that poor block. Good choice, opponent. Well, down to seven isn't that good. But still, they have to do something about the Cavalier sometime. It has Vigilance, so it's immune to seal away. It is not immune to settle the wreckage if my opponent does absolutely nothing. Still, I can keep attacking with it until the day it dies, because when it makes two creatures, I can draw two cards. Ah, the Sunwing's coming in. That certainly implies settle the wreckage. Unless there is some other card to be cast. Uh-oh, let the flood commence. I'll send in the Cavalier. If it's settle, it is settle. I won't fight over it. The opponent might also make a blocker and just chump block, which would be a good move. Okay, pride mate. That's a trade. I'm stunned. When they could have made a Dawn of Hope token and gained life and made their pride mate a 5-5. All right. Remember, don't click this. Don't don't just click over here. It's not about the life gain. It's not the optional trigger like is on the Ajani's Pride Mate. It is your card draw and you needs it. Yes, yes. Thank you. We still need more creatures. But casting the Path of Discovery gives us even more payoff for playing creatures. And they didn't even activate the Dawn of Hope. Oh, dear opponent. Trinity, read your cards. Your cards need you. They can't play themselves. Excellent. They come in tapped because of the Sunwing. Ooh, library. Yes, please. So down here is the cost section for Bard. Whenever creatures attack the opponent, we have to pay a mana for each attacking creature, which is interesting for a token deck, but we're not going to have attackers this time. The Herald of Faith, whenever it attacks, they gain two life. Well, there's a lot to do with this March of the Multitudes, but I do think attacking with the War Leader is good enough that we can't turn that down, even though we have all these ways to use the mana. We'll pay the one. We'll generate two creatures. We'll add all these triggers to the stack. So we'll explore. We'll draw any lands we find. This I don't need. 
We can pay to draw cards. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Gain some life. The opponent willing to go down to just two here. Interesting. The only thing left to fear is some kind of a board wipe. So in that case, I'll play around it by holding back a war leader and I'll use the district guide instead. Graveyard's fine. Don't really care about that. Grab a planes. Pay the one. Draw Johnny. And end the turn. We can still make some March of the Multitude soldiers if we really need to. Our opponent's had two life. We have a lot of creatures. Next turn, we can definitely do a massive attack if we wish. But Herald of Faith, the flyers are coming in. Certainly implies settle the wreckage. But I've said that before. All right, my turn. We've got a venerated Loxodon. Oh boy. So, settle the wreckage. We should attack with enough things that we would kill the opponent without giving up too much. So... <clears throat> if we attack with this and they block it or remove it, then they still have two creatures, and then I should attack with le at least one or two more creatures to make sure there's enough pressure if the opponent has seal away or some other removal spells and chump blockers. So, here we go. You're in, and I'll send the other two twos. And there's four attackers. One, two, three, four. There's my new cats. Library, yep. I can basically gain a million now with uh, the Wild Growth Walker, so it's a good time to have it. I'll draw it. And uh, sure, why not? Another card. Sounds fun. Our own seal away. There is Settle the Wreckage. Let's go get all that mana. If our opponent has multiple settles, there is a Shalai in our deck that can protect us from those. We just have to get to it. So with four mana, I think it's best to get Wild Growth Walker online. <clears throat> don't need another one of those, I don't feel. I think our life gain engine is dramatic as it is. And we can end the turn. It's too bad this was tapped, or we could have also played Venerated Loxodon, but it's okay. The Everdawn Champion is here. The return of the Herald, still gaining that sweet life. We could make one token. Can we win the game off that token? It doesn't appear so. We need to set up our big March of the Multitudes, and I think doing that next turn, and then we can definitely set up a camaraderie or something of that nature. So I'll pass the turn, sitting on all this ammo and a million Explore Triggers, and it's going to be glorious. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Don't worry about a thing. Hopefully the opponent lets us do it. One life for each creature they control, okay. And they use Dawn of Hope to draw a card. I do believe the opponent, if they were paying attention, knows about the March of the Multitudes. It might even still be revealed to them because it was on top of the deck and we drew it. 
but that doesn't stop me from doing it. So what do we got here? One, 16, 17, 18. If I did my math right, there we go. Begin the triggers. Actually, no. Um, camaraderie, though, will deck me. Let's be clear about that. Camaraderie will deck me. So what is the card I actually want? We pretty much have to put all our mana into attacking with the creatures anyway. So I don't need anything. I'll just use Library, and I'll just pump this. I'll just let this uh, Tender Shoot Drive pump the whole squad. So every creature is an Explorer Trigger. Every Explorer Trigger... Every creature is a life gain trigger. Oh my lordy. It's gonna run my clock. I wonder how it makes the decision though after I go through it all. Gosh, I wonder if I am going to have the time to attack with everything I need to with the bard on the table. If it, the timer is going to run on me for it. I should have made less creatures. Maybe that's the right play. But that's not the fun play. I could definitely deck myself if I wanted. But the opponent won't make us sit through that. They understand. I would love to see the Wildgrowth Walker be at its absolute finest. All right, it looks like I won't actually have time for the Constructed Event Blue Tempo deck today. Quest complete, as usual. The Green Tokens deck takes a very long time to do its thing, but when it does its thing, oh, does it do its thing. I'd like to thank you for watching this episode of The Adventures of Young CGB on our free-to-play account. This has been a lot of fun, and again, I keep recording them because you keep watching them, so show your support in comments and keep watching if you're enjoying the series, and uh, let me know in chat what you think. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.